brothers and sisters to increase your iman. Read the miracle, recite the Quran. Recite it every day and do read it loud. The verses of Quran are almost less bright. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wal Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen. ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Dear brothers and sisters everywhere Welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation In the beginning I would like to welcome our studio guest Sheikh Ismail Ahmed Basuni uh, Brother Ammar from Bosnia and Smir from Bosnia as well Thank you so much for joining us uh, and I would like also to remind you that our phone numbers area code 002 and the email address is tajweed at huda.tv yet uh, I will be able to accept your phone calls in the next segment inshallah after uh, the break for those who would like to join us live in order to correct their recitation uh, I would like to begin by listening to uh, a beautiful recitation of Surat Al Ma'arish from verse number 19 in the Insana Kulika Halwa through verse number 35 of the same surah, inshallah. Sheikh Smail, please. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan ir rajeem. Bismillahi ir rahman ir rahim. In al إنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه الشر جزوعا وإذا مسه الخير منوعا إلا المصلين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون والذين في أموالهم حق معلوم للساء والذين يصدقون بيوم الدين والذين هم من عذاب ربهم مشفقون إن عذاب ربهم غير والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير مل فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم شهاداتهم قائمون 
والذين هم على صلاتهم يحافظون أولئك في جنات مكرمون جزاك الله خيرا Thank you so much. Uh, and now, brothers and sisters, before we get into explaining the meaning of these verses from number 19 through number 35, I would like to share with you so the meaning of some very, very important vocabulary through our word bank. Uh, we can also share with you the slide. Uh, the first word that we're going to study is the word halua. Uh, that's in verse number 19. And the word haluan is taken from al hala. This is a psychological disorder which means an anxiety or extreme fear and impatience. And the word jazuan in the second verse, verse number 20, uh, is the opposite of patience. Jazuan means irritable or greatly grieved. The word manuan, another evil trait, means uh, withholding or a person who is uh, niggardly or very tight. He does not spin. He hardly spins. Haqqum ma'loom, in verse number 24, uh, two words. The word haqq means the truth and the word haqq means also the right. Human rights. Allah's rights or your own rights upon yourself. Haqqum um, ma'loom here is referring to the fixed term or the fixed amount which is very well known in the wealth of every person who is wealthy. Wealthy. Then we're talking about the share of a zakah. When you possess certain amount of money which is zakatable, then you must pay the right of the poor, which is known for instance, in, in person's wealth or investment, is 2.5%. Mushfiqoon, in verse number 27, Mushfiqoon means fearful. The person who is mushfiq is khaif, is fearful. And one uh, of the believers uh, would fear for either one of two reasons. Either because of not fulfilling what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained properly or due to transgressing the limits or disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that what will make the believer fearful of Allah's torment. Al-adun is plural of adi or mu'tadi, the person who transgresses the limits. And here we're talking about the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ra'un is plural of ra'in. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Every one of you is a guardian, and every guardian will be asked about those who are under his guardianship and responsibility. Uh, but the word ra'un here literally means those who protect and take care of their responsibility, those who honor their trust, and those who uh, keep their promises. Muhtu'in, that word was mentioned in the Quran three times. And uh, it is a plural of muhtu'a. And muhtu'a means one who hates towards something. In Surah Al-Qamar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Muhtu'in ila da'i, yaqulu al-kafiruna hadha yawmun asr. On the day of resurrection, when people will be resurrected from their graves, they will hear the caller calling them unto the land of resurrection. And everybody will be focused on following the call and going towards the caller. Muhtu'ina. They will be hasting toward uh, the sound which they listen to. Izin is... Uh, crowds, so they will be sitting in crowds. We'll explain the general meaning, inshallah, in a little bit. Masbuqin is plural of masbuq, is the one who is outrun. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we're not to be defeated or not to be uh, outrun. Uh, I believe we should uh, start immediately uh, explaining these beautiful verses of Surah Al-Ma'arij, the ways of Asan, as we uh, mentioned its meaning last time. This is a Makki Surah. And in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented three things. From 19 through 35, he presented, number one, a diagnosis of a human psychological disorder, which is al-hala'ah, the intensive fear, the impatience, the psychological disorder, the anxiety. And he described the symptoms. So that every person who may have any of these symptoms or all of them is diagnosed with al-hala'. Al-hala'a is a trait of al-jahiliyyah. Then the third step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended and revealed a divine prescription, a divine treatment. How can one eliminate this anxiety and indulge into a condition and a state of comfort and an inner peace through being content? with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for him. So the first stage, or the first step, is the diagnosis of the disease. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَهَ لُوعًا Verily, man, in general, every human being, is created very impatient, has this psychological disorder of الْهَلَعَ Intensive fear, and um, an anxiety, very impatient. But there are some people who are exempt from this psychological disorder. The believers are exempt definitely. Not all the believers, because there are some who claim to be believers, but they do not fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained on them. So they may suffer the same psychological disorder like the non-believers. So al-insan in general is created very impatient in a condition or a state of anxiety. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا Here is the diagnosis through describing the symptoms. Whenever an evil touches him, he is very irritable and discontented. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا He hates to show impatience, to show objection and dissatisfaction. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا and whenever good touches him, he preserves it for himself, he withholds it for himself, and he does not extend this goodness to others. He is very miser, he is very tight. That is not only pertaining wealth, rather pertaining any good that can be extended towards others. Through giving somebody a ride if you have a vehicle, through assisting somebody by any possible mean, it does not have to be a financial, but the person who is jazua, the person who is halua, have this psychological disorder. Whenever good touches him, he makes sure that he conceives it and he saves it for himself. Doesn't want any person to know about it because he believes the only mean of security for him is this position. So if he were to give it out to others, then he will be weak. This is what he thinks. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, أَيُّكُمْ مَالُ وَرِثِهِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ مَالِهِ Which one of you likes the worth of his ears, of his inheritor, more than his own wealth? And the meaning is not as what you think, the apparent meaning. No, there is a little metaphor in it, which is, who would like to give his wealth to his ear more than keeping his wealth for himself? So all the companions said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, none of us would like to give his wealth to others. Rather, everybody likes to keep his wealth for himself and position for himself. So the Prophet ﷺ confirmed the opposite. Then he explained what he meant. He said, whenever we spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is your wealth. It has been kept safely for you and untouched. Rather, it grows bigger and bigger for you.
But when you protect your wealth, you think that you're protecting it by not spending for the sake of Allah, you do not give the prescribed zakah, nor do you give any voluntary charity. By doing so like Qarun and others, you think that your wealth is increasing. Basically, you love your ear more than your own self because definitely you can go to sleep and you never get up again. So what happens to all this wealth? It isn't yours anymore. So this is a fact. If people would understand this equation properly, they would know that keeping my money in a safer place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than passing on this money to anybody else, including my own children. Of course, I hope that nobody would mis misunderstand me and say that the Sheikh is saying you should donate your entire wealth. Rather, it is a mean of encouraging people to have an asset preserved and saved for themselves in the hereafter through giving in a charity. The Prophet وسلم, said to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him when he was willing to give his entire wealth as a charity, or to write his will, to, to give his entire wealth for the sake of Allah, the Prophet وسلم, kept decreasing the amount until he came to one third. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas said, Ya Rasulullah, what about if I give one third? They said, Yes, a thulusu was thulusu kathir. Yet one third is still plenty. It is better for you to give to to save and keep your uh, some of your money for your ears, than letting them beg others and seek their help. So keeping balance is a prophetic prescription in this regard. But one should not forget about saving some asset for himself in the hereafter through giving in a charity. That is the opposite, of course, of wa ida masahu al khayru kana manwa. So this is the diagnosis and the symptoms of this evil disease of al-jahiliyyah, of disbelief. Then who is exempt? Who will never be affected with such psychological disorder? Fear, impatience, jaza and hala. Illa al-musalleen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed the divine medication in three steps. The prescription that will protect you against this evil trait and evil disease consists of eight things. Number one, if we look together in the Quran, uh, verse number 22, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except those who observe their prayers regularly. Then, number 24, I'm going to skip some verses which are supplementary, explaining the meanings of previous verses. But I will just mention in general the eight steps of the treatment in the divine prescription. So number one, verse number 22, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Number two, verse number 24, وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ مَعْلُومٌ And those who have a fixed and a well-known amount of money to be given to the poor. Number three, وَالَّذِينَ يُصَدِّقُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ That is in verse number 26, and those who believe in the day of recompense. Number four, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ Verse number 27, and those who fear the torment of the Lord. Number five, verse number 29. هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who guard their chastity and private parts. Number six. Uh, هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And those who keep their trust and covenants. Number seven, verse number 33. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِشَهَادَاتِهِمْ قَائِمُونَ And those who stand firm in their testimonies. And number eight, again, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ And those who guard their prayers or their salah. We notice that the very first step in the prescription of medication was the salah. And number eight also was the salah. There was, of course, <clears throat> a supplementary meaning in verse number 8 or in the 8th step that was not presented in the first step. We'll explain all of that inshallah azajal. But I want everybody to pay close attention to the 8 steps of the treatment in order to be free from this psychological disorder. In order to go to sleep with an inner peace. In order to have fun and enjoy your life. And meanwhile secure salvation on the day of judgment inshallah azajal. Number 1. إن الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون إلا المصلين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون. So those who will be safe from this evil psychological disorder, those who regularly pray على صلاتهم دائمون, they constantly pray, non-stop. I do not mean they do not do anything other than the prayer. Rather, I mean they pray on regular basis. They are constant on their prayer. 
There are some Muslims, unfortunately, who only pray on Eid days. Or they go to the masjid only on Fridays. And there are some Muslims who do not enter the masjid in their entire lives, not even once. Only when they die, so that Muslims will offer the funeral prayer on them or for them. So those who would like to be treated and saved, they have to be praying regularly. Nothing would stop them from the prayer whatsoever as long as they live. That is the meaning of the imun, consistency. وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ And those who have a fixed amount, which is the zakah rate, in their wealth. <clears throat> those in whose wealth there is a known right for the poor. That is the minimum amount that they, they pay. They do not hesitate in paying it. They do not discuss it by saying, well, can I pay it later? Can I give them instead of this that much? Rather, they choose of the average of their wealth to give to the poor. This right is for those who are in need, the beggars, those who ask for it, and those who are known to be poor even if they do not ask for it. Like, brothers and sisters, what if we live in an era like the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah be pleased with him, when all the Muslims paid their zakah, and the capital bank of the country of the Muslim Ummah was full of zakah, and there was no one to accept it. Everybody was well off. What do we do? Do we tell Muslims and the rich people, don't worry about paying the zakah anymore, you don't have to? No, because the zakah can be utilized in many other means. So this money, the share of the poor and the needy in one's wealth, don't you ever you think yourself that you're doing somebody a favor by paying him the zakah money. Rather, you are doing yourself a favor by taking this money out of your wealth in order to be saved from this evil trade and in order to be saved on the day of judgment. Don't you think that you're doing any person a favor by giving him or assisting him through the zakah fund or through the voluntary charity? And those who believe in the day of recompense. This ayah, verse number 26, we really need to have an entire program, a whole series explaining the meaning of all the crises and all the sins which are committed in this dunya are simply because the person is negligent of this fact. Whatever you do, you will be held accountable for it. Whatever you say, likewise you will be asked about it. Even if you do not do anything like today, the tyrant regime in Syria, these Alawi guys, are killing the innocent civilians right and left, massacring children. We have seen a recent video that the soldiers are torturing a kid in order to bow down to a picture frame of President Bashar. Can you imagine the Muslim Ummah is sitting and watching and doing nothing? We too will be responsible for that. For the Muslim rulers who understand that one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, what did you do in order to save these innocent Muslims for the, these massacres? If they ever think about it, then they will have to make a move. They will stop supporting any tyrant regime. They will stop supporting those who torture the Muslims. They will stop themselves torturing their own citizens. So, will make me quit sins. Will make every person, will make a thief who breaks into somebody's house avoid that. Why? Because there will be a day of recompense. I'll be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's going to ask me. I have to prepare an answer for it. They are fearful of Allah's torment. Surah Al Mu'minun has some wonderful verses from verse number 60 explaining that. In one of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ And those who do and give whatever they give of good deeds, or righteous deeds, or charity, they do that for the sake of Allah, sincerely, meanwhile, they are fearful. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ They're frightened. Why? Because they know that they will be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they don't know whether their sadaqat or good deeds have been accepted or not. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa adaha in this regard. When she thought the verse is referring to the sinners, the Muslims who may commit zina or drink or steal, he said, no, 
يبنت الصديق rather it is those who pray and fast and give any charity and they're afraid that their deeds might not be accepted this is a very important quality of the believers they do the good deeds meanwhile they maintain a balance between hope that their deeds will be accepted and fear that their deeds may be rejected إن عذاب ربهم غير مأمون دين والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون and those who guard their فروج is plural a فرج فرج is a beautiful term in Arabic that refers politely to one's private part whether a male or a female genital how would one protect his private part in two ways number one by not showing his عورة those who may wear bikini or wear revealing clothes they do not guard their private parts they reveal in a state and the second way is by avoiding indulging into any illicit relationship and how to do that surah al-mu'minun explain uh, in verse number surah an-nur explain in verse number 30 the following verse وقل للمؤمنات يغضضن من أبصارهن وأحفظن فروجهن. In order to guard your private part in chastity, then you must lower your gaze not to indulge into the major sin. That one thing leads to another. إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين. Unless of course if you'd like to have a, a, an intimate relationship with your spouse or in the past when there was milk uh, al-yameen uh, uh, what your right hand possess that is not available anymore those uh, some people in the rich Arab countries who may think that my servant or my maid is like my slave and they deceive them so that they have sex with them this is adultery there is no slavery anymore there is no milk al-yameen no more so this is an act of adultery then it will be limited only nowadays to having a lawful sexual relationship with your spouse. Then one who would uh, restrain himself only to that, he is not blameworthy. But those who will go beyond that, they are the transgressors. And those who guard and protect their amanat, their trust and their covenants. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِشَهَادَاتِهِمْ قَائِمُونَ And those who, uh, who stand firm in, their, firm in their testimonies, they would not give a false testimony, even if it, goes, if it is going to hurt them themselves, or their parents, or their close family members. The last one, the eighth step is, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ We didn't speak about the salah in the first step. And now in the eighth step, يُحَافِظُونَ They guard it through offering the prayers on time. They maintain its standing, its ruku'ah, its sujood with khushu'ah. So when you do that, that helps you to avoid this psychological uh, disorder in addition to أُولَٰئِكَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ مُكْرَمُونَ They will be honored treated with honor on the day of judgment in the gardens of heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. And we'll take a short break and we'll get back with you inshallah with the practice of tajweed after the short break. So stay tuned. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Let's talk. So this is something that you have to point out to, the, to them in the Bible. It's something which is, I think, very badly needed by the youth, which is uh, staying firm on the truth. This is just one of the greatest examples for me of how to control your anger. Within the framework of, of being the cleanest religion, the cleanest jurisprudence, and in the meantime, uh, uh, the kindest religion to animals. Watch Let's Talk with Khalil Amanet as he interviews guests and discusses a variety of topics, everything from youth issues to religious issues. Join us here on Hoda TV. Ark of Noah. We're going to be mentioning uh, the significance of uh, the Ark of Noah. Knowledge is the essence of everything. Once you get the knowledge, then it generates the desire and the motivation, and then it brings about the action. 
And we're going to be discussing the state of the Ummah uh, and the division which uh, unfortunately has, uh, has appeared in it and the methodology of trying to arrive at the right path. Your system of knowledge or your system of motivation are hit by any of these threats, you will definitely go astray and you will be suffering from a disease in the heart. We're also going to be discussing uh, what Allah wants from us. How can we make that? Allah gave us the revelation. So Allah SWT is addressing first and foremost the companions. If they believe in what you have believed in, then they are guided. So the real guidance is what the Prophet and the companions were upon. Join Sheikh Mutasim in the program Ark of Noah and discover the answers to these questions. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Inshallah, uh, we're going to tackle the different categories of Qalqala uh, briefly because we studied in the last episode uh, one of the characteristics which do not have opposites, which was Al Qalqala or shaking. And we said its letters are five compiled in the face Qutub Jad. The Qaf, the Ta, the Ba, Jim, and the Dal. Whenever any of these letters happen to be unvowed or sakin, then we must shake the letter. But this shaking or this qalqala varies. Sometimes it is very strong, sometimes it is moderate, sometimes it is uh, average or weak, depending on uh, the position of any of these letters in the word and whether it is just sakin or mushaddad letter. So for instance, the first category, as we see on the slide, is the highest level of qalqala. I would like to call it even the major qalqala, is when the qalqala letter uh, have a shadda, which means this letter consists of two letters originally. One of them, the first is second non-vowel, and the second has the regular vowel. So since both of them are the same, and one of them is non-vowel, so we merge the first and the second, and that uh, develops or leads to uh, one letter, with the shadda, the shadda which looks like the uh, top of the seam. Look at this example. Very powerful qalqala. The shadda on the letter qaf indicates that the letter qaf consists of two letters of the same letter, qaf and qaf. But the first one is sakina and the second one is vowel with a kasra which appears on the shadda. So this is the most powerful qalqala, if the qalqala letter is mushaddad. قَالُوا الْآنَ جِئْتَ بِالْحَقَّ Another example in Surah Allah. تَبَّتْ يَدَا أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبَّ Because the ba in the word وَتَبَّ consists of two letters of ba. The first one is second and the second is متحرك or vowed with the vowel fatha. So we merge together and when we stop, then we apply the shadda along with the sukoon that develops the qalqala, very powerful qalqala. Um, the second category is the moderate or al mutawasit when the qalqala letter is just a second letter and by the end of the word. Like all the examples that we studied last time in Surah Al Ikhlas. لم يلد ولم يولد even from the beginning قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد so this is a مرد قلقلة قلقلة لرا is the last letter of the word and it is just second without شد the least category of قلقلة is when حرف القلقلة any of the five letters of قطب جد happens to be ساكن and in the middle of the word such as وتقطعون السبيل وتقطعون السبيل the قاف is in the middle and ويجعلون لله البنات سبحانه ولهم ما يشتهون the letter jim in the word وَيَجْعَلُونَ this is the least qalqala because the qalqala letter is sakin and is in the middle of the word inshallah also in the next 
uh, episode next week, hopefully, inshallah, we'll get to study the sounds of the vowel of the qalqala. Tends to be fatha or kasra or dhamma, depending on what, and the different views in this regard. We'll study that, inshallah, in details next time. But for now, we're ready to practice by reading from verse number 19 through number 35 of Surah al Ma'aj. We already have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Muhammad. How are you, Muhammad? Fine. Go ahead and read from verse number 19 of Surah Al Ma'arij, page number 569. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا 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 مسه الشر جزوعا okay. وإذا yeah, مسه الخير Muhammad. منوعا The number of the verse follows the verse. It does not come before it. So when I say number 19, then I gotta read the verse that came before it. I would say إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا. Okay. Okay. Try to uh, listen to me. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِشَهَادَاتِهِمْ قَائِمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ Wonderful, Fama. Muhammad. Muhammad, thank you so much. Hasbuk, Jazakallah khairan. We have Abdullah from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, again from verse number 19, ya Abdullah. أعوذ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه الشر جزوعا وإذا مسه الخير منوعا إلا المصلين الذين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون والذين في أموالهم حق معلوم للسائل والمحروم والذين يصدقون بيوم الدين والذين هم من عذاب ربهم مشفقون إن عذاب ربهم غير غير مأمون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون 
إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم بشهاداتهم قائمون والذين هم على صلاتهم يحافظون أولئك في جنات مكرمون Wonderful عبد الله ما شاء الله How old are you عبد الله? Are you still there? فما للذين عبد الله Can you hear me? Yes. How old are you? Uh, I'm ten. Seven. Ma sha Allah la quwwata illa billah. You just made my day. May Allah bless you and your family. Thank you so much. Enjoy your citation. It is wonderful. It is very correct. May Allah bless you and your parents once again. Thank you, Abdullah. We're done listening to this part. And Ahmed, can you beat Abdullah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه الشر جزوعا وإذا مسه الخير منوعا إلا المصلين الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون والذين في أموالهم حق معلوم للسائل والمحروم والذين يصدقون بيوم الدين والذين هم من عذاب ربهم مشفقون إن عذاب ربهم غير مأمون والذين هم لفوجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم بشهاداتهم قائمون والذين هم على صلاتهم يحافظون أولئك في جنات مكرمون. ذاك الله خيرا. But just next time pay attention to this med. أولئك at least make it four إن شاء الله. ذاك الله خيرا. We already have أم يحيى. السلام عليكم. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. How are you sister? I'm fine. How are you sir? الحمد لله شكرا. Are you gonna recite today إن شاء الله? إن شاء الله. Verse number nineteen please. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الإنسان خلق عدوى لهمزة according to حفص we have to pronounce it of course شيخ إسماعيل will tell us better if we recite in according to ورش ورش أم قالون أم قالون then we'll say إن الإنسان But now we're reciting according to Hafs. Yes. In al insana. In al insana kun ka alwa. Iza mastahu shar jazwa. Wa iza mastahu khayr manwa. 
Why did you park a little bit with the lamb? There is, uh, you, you do not stop on the lamb. There is shadda, yes, you say, illa al musallin. But you do not pause at it. Okay. Illa al musallin. Alladina hum ala salatihim daimun. Walladina fi amwalihim haqqum ma'alum. verse again please no. repeat the verse again وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَى زِوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ بِتِقَى وَرَى Okay, Ya Ummu Yahya, many of us uh, get confused when we get to pronounce the mad, the ali particularly, which is preceded by a fat letter, such as the ra. The ra could be fat, could be thin depending on its vowel, or if it is not vowel, we look at the letter before it. So the ra in this case is already having fatha, ra, so it is mufakhama. Yes. So meanwhile, I know that the alif is always thin. It okay. is a, not a. So people tend to say, well, why? Because they think they have to thin the alif. No. The mad in this case would follow its characteristic, would follow the same characteristic of the previous letter. Yes. So if, it is, if there is a fat letter before the mad, then automatically the mad will be fattened as well. So do not hesitate nor fear to say, فَمَنِ بِتَغَى وَرَا You see all the way مُفَخَّمَ وَرَا وَرَا آ Then the hamza will be thin, مُرَقَّقَ Okay, say that again please. فَمَنِ بِتَغَى وَرَا أَذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ الْعَادُونَ Look, هُمُ الْعَادُونَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ And the عين is very thin. You cannot say آ. هُمُ الْعَا عَا هُمُ الْعَادُونَ And look at the ألف, the مد, after the عين, because the عين is thin, is مرققة. The ألف of a مد has become thin automatically. So you say الْعَادُونَ The whole word is مرققة. Okay. فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم بشهاداتهم قائمون والذين هم على صلاتهم there is no qalqala, just hems on the calf. It's not qalqala though. Okay, jazakumullah khairan. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. And brothers and sisters, until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to bless you all. And make us from Ahlul Qur'an, the people of the Qur'an, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to be his own people. Al-ladheena hum ahlullahi wa khasatu. Aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. Read the miracle, recite the Qur'an. Recite it every day. Verses of Quran are almost less bright.
This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. We were chosen to be part of his nation. He gave us a message, and that was Islam. So read this miracle, recite the Quran.